Hey everybody, welcome to the Blue Collar Beer Gourmet channel. This is Chris here doing another Blue Collar Gentleman video. This is part of the Beer Glassware series. I'm hoping that that bird's trilling doesn't become extremely annoying during the course of this video. But, you know, you just got to work with what you have. This is, after all, the Blue Collar Beer Gourmet. Um, so today I'm going to be discussing goblets and chalices. Uh, as luck would have it, I don't actually have a goblet, so I'm going to be using something else instead. So. I'm going to be showing you here chalice, and I'm using this in lieu of a goblet. Now you could say, Chris, that sure looks like a uh, like a martini glass, and you would be correct. This is a martini glass. Um, <clears throat> this is the best thing I could come up with to uh, to even look like a goblet. Wow, that is a really really annoying bird. Sorry. Um, Honestly, that bird needs to go find someplace else to go. Uh, anyway, so this is what I have in lieu of a goblet. This is what I have in a, as a chalice. Now, here's what's kind of interesting about this. This is the Stella Artois chalice. It's sold as such. They, 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 they uh, well, on their, on their commercials, they refer to it as the chalice. Um, I'm not even sure where I got this thing, to be honest with you. I, I really don't remember where I got it. Uh, but supposedly the distinction between a goblet and a chalice is if it's delicate and long stemmed, it's a goblet. If it's heavy and thick walled, it's a chalice. Well, this seems kind of delicate to me, especially with the gold up here on the, on the rim. But, um, I, you know, I, I, I just, I, I can't say I, I need to be putting these up here. So I need to be talking like this with these up in view, uh, and get my head out of my butt. Uh, okay. So. Supposedly, this is the one that's uh, heavy and thick walled. Now, I will say the stem on this is very, very thick, as opposed to, say, the stem on this, which is uh, delicate. So, uh, you know, theoretically, this is the goblet. It's delicate and long stemmed, and this is the chalice. Um, it does have, seems kind of delicate on the glass, but, it, you know, as I said, it does have a very thick uh, stem here. Okay, the main, the main important thing here is stems, right, long stems. Um, both of these designs are created to maintain a two centimeter head. It's achieved by scoring the inside of the bottom. I'll show you inside of here, which you can see. It's not going to work so much on the martini glass, which creates a CO2 nucleation point with stream of eternal bubbles and a perfect head and re head retention as a result. Let's try that again. It's designed to maintain a two centimeter head achieved by scoring the inside bottom, which creates a CO2 nucleation point with stream of eternal bubbles and perfect head retention as a result. There we go. So I, I, uh, I did get that from a website that is not my own. I have to admit that. Uh, but the point being, both of these are way wide mouth for deep sips. Now, um, I did a little shopping around on, uh, on um, Amazon. Found out that chalices here, you can get three 11.2 ounce chalices like this for $29.99, no shipping. You can pick up four goblets, and I'm not going to bother to put this up because, once again, this is a martini glass. This is not a goblet. But you can get four schooner goblets, um, 21 ounce, four 21 ounce schooner goblets uh, for $38.95, no shipping. So if you're needing to get some bar glasses, that's what it's about what it's going to run you. The real question here, gang, what do we want to drink out of this? Well, <laughs> Let's start with the um, American and German um, more familiar varieties. So, if you're drinking an Imperial Porter, you're going to want to drink it out of one of these. Or a Berliner Weiss, a European Strong Lager, or a German Maybach. Now, here is where we get into the Belgian glasses, and this is where it gets rather interesting, because you probably remember a couple of videos ago, we did Belgian glasses, and it seemed like just about everything that Belgians drank, you drank out of the tulip-shaped Belgian glass. Here's the distinction. If you're drinking strong Belgian ales, you're going to want to drink them out of a goblet or a chalice. I'm talking about dark ales, doubles, quads, strong dark ales, strong pale ales, triples, okay? Now, as I did say before, uh, in a, a couple of videos ago when we talked about the Belgian, uh, the tulip glass, um, the Belgians that you want to drink out of that are the Blanc, Belgian Blonde, the Faro, the Fruit, the Lambics, uh, the Gozas, the Pale Ales, the Saisons. The big, strong, heavy ABV, um, thick, uh, almost syrupy type Belgian ales, you're going to want to drink out of one of these. Okay, so 
like I said, I don't know where I got this. I really, I, it's, I've had it for so long. I'm not even, I really honestly don't remember where I picked up the Stella Artois glass. I'm not a big Stella Artois fan, so I'm not really sure how it was that I, uh, I came across this, but I do have it. And when I drank, uh, you know, a heavier, like a, a quad or, you know, something like that, one of those, those raisiny, plummy type um, Belgian beers, I usually drink it out of this. Now, I do, another reason I brought this out is I met a guy in Washington, who I can't remember his name, but I met him at Odd Otter Brewing, which is on Pacific Avenue in downtown Tacoma, and he was telling me that he has actually used a martini glass in lieu of a goblet, and for pretty much the same reasons that I enumerated here, that it has the wide mouth, that it has the long stem, and, uh, you know, it do doesn't have the scoring in there to keep the... Um, to keep the two centimeter head, but you know, I mean, you, you work with what you got. That's that's for damn sure. And I'm going to tell you that every time. I mean, like uh, we're, one of the videos we're going to be having very soon is about the staunch, um, the the small slender glass. If you don't have one, a Tom Collins glass works just as well, or what works works in lieu of. I should say, wouldn't shouldn't say works just as well, but works in lieu of. You work with what you have. And remember, as I've said before, you know, it, I, I do want you to go out there. I do want you to get a decent set of bar glasses. But if all you can do right now is just get yourself some pint glasses, then do that. Then do that. Because just about any beer, there's a few exceptions. Some nitro beers, they tell you to drink directly from the can. I've seen a few other uh, cans where the brewer has told, you know, said specifically, drink this straight from the can. But more often than not, you're going to want to pour your beer into a glass. Always try to pour it into the proper glass. But as I said, if you don't have that, a pint. A pint glass works for everything. If you go to Beer Advocate and type in beer glassware and see what varieties are supposed to go into a pint, it's just kind of the catch-all. I mean, everything goes into it. Um, and I'm certainly not trying to, you know, to shy you away from pint. I mean, here I am showing you both of these, trying to get you to drink out of them. But I am saying that if all else fails, pull out a pint glass and drink out of it. So, there you have it. Goblet, chalice, chalice, thick-walled, sturdy and go, uh, goblets delicate and long stemmed. So there's the, the big distinction. There's the two glasses. Until next time, remember that the gentleman's code is always seeking self-improvement. And I thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with anybody you think could use it. And I appreciate you watching, guys. Thanks a lot.